morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm glad to see everybody made it through Vacation Bible School successfully. <laughs> made it back this morning. Oh, what a week this has been. And what a joy it has been to be a part of the lives of the children. And so we're grateful for, uh, for their participation and for your help in making it happen. What a deal. Uh, I think the only announcements for this week are we've got uh, our Bible study resumes on Tuesday. We have a church council meeting on Tuesday, uh, still by Zoom at this point, so we're continuing to meet over uh, over the internet. So it starts at uh, 6:30. Uh, uses the standard standard um, sign in. Okay. Any other announcements? I've been working on making our church library where we can start using it to check out books again. And we had stored some stuff from back when we were doing church yard sales in there. That stuff is now set out um, in the church library, which for those who don't know, it's if you go down the main hallway, it's the room kind of just past the office. Um, you guys are welcome to come, browse what we have, and if you see anything you want, you can just leave a donation in the offering next week. Um, if anything's not taken within the next couple weeks, I'll just take to Northside, but I wanted to offer you guys a chance to look through it first. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. I didn't have that in my notes. Thank you. Days of Grace will meet by Zoom on Monday. Okay, excellent. All right. Well, welcome. Uh, may we join our hearts together for a moment of prayer as we begin our time of worship. Let us pray. Oh God, our guide and guardian, you have led us apart from the busy world into the quiet of your house. Grant us grace to worship you in spirit and in truth to the comfort of our souls and the upbuilding of every good purpose and holy desire. Enable us to do more perfectly the work to which you have called us, that we may not fear the coming of night, when we shall resign into your hands the task which we, you have committed to us. So may we worship you, not with our lips at this hour, but by word and deed all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Our first hymn of worship this morning is Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. It's number 277. Find the words up on the screen or you may find it in your book. I mean, it's your hymn. Whatever. Same thing. <laughs> Our loving 
Almighty God, we thank you, Father, for this day, for the opportunity that we have to come into your house, here to lift our hearts before you, to lift our needs, to lift our praise, to give thanks, but also to ask for your help, to ask for your healing. It is a world filled with many needs, struggles and challenges just seem to overwhelm. We have the disasters of fire and, and flooding and the physical issues dealing with the pandemic that are still continuing to touch lives and hurt families. So we ask, Lord, that you will come and guide us into a way of wisdom, a way of understanding, a way of being smart about our lives and how we live, that we might offer words of grace, lives of peace to those around us. May we be a part of carrying out the message of reconciliation, of renewal and strength, of peace and healing in our world. We lift to you the prayer needs in our hearts and on our lips. We ask, O oh Lord, that you be with each person according to their need. Touch them and reassure them that they are never far from your embrace, that they are held lovingly and kindly and will be always there. And then, Lord, we pray that your spirit may rest upon us now, that as we worship, as we sing, as we read your scripture and proclaim the great, great tidings of your mercy and grace, that we might be filled with your spirit and renewed for the week that comes before us. And Lord, may your peace settle upon us. Father, we thank you and we praise you. And we give you all the glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And as he told us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to stand and join with us in our affirmation of faith. It's number 887 in your hymnal. You'll also find the words up on the screens. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor death nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
They have a joke about that. Oh, oh <laughs> not not that we have that. We got a donation box. <laughs> yeah, we, we do have a we do have a box by the door. The offer place disappeared. I know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> Vacation Bible School <laughs> was still in turnaround, so that's okay. But. We have multiple ways. You can either use the offering place, you can use the collection box. There is also the ability to give online. So if you would like to uh, contribute using the internet, you can go to our website and access the give button there, which will allow you to make a safe and secure online transaction. So we thank you for those opportunities. Okay, I think we have singing today. Yes, we do.
Remember, there was a family, this is it. And I'm grateful that we had that opportunity to be family. And, uh, you know, it makes, it makes all the difference. We continue our journey, where it's a journey of learning. And learning comes every, everywhere you look. And today we experience something that, that may strike you as strange at first, at least it did me. And in reading through this, I went, why, why these verses? But we are reading out of uh, Mark 6 and doing two segments. One of them is verse 30 through 34. And then we will skip over and read verse 53 through 56. Hear these words. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. And as he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. And he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Skipping ahead. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went from villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May we pray. Oh, loving God, we seek to understand more about your love for us. Teach us. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strong rock and our redeemer. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Jesus has become quite the phenomenon, and, and, and that has proven to be difficult. Uh, not in ways that we would associate it, you know, but in ways that... that get in uh, that hinder the ministry let me put it that way the disciples went out on mission jesus gave them power over unclean spirits and they went out and they they taught and they healed and they cast out unclean spirits and they just come back and they rushed to Jesus. You see the, the excitement of what they've been doing, of being able to work in his power and being able to help people. To actually see the spirit working through them has given them such, such a sense of, of wonder. I mean, you can't help but that look at that and experience it and think somehow or another, this is amazing. Though they've seen Jesus do it, that Jesus' power works through them has left them, well, almost speechless. They come back, they're excited, they're tired, but they're excited and they seek to tell Jesus all that's been going on. And so they gather and they start talking all at once, I'm sure. I doubt that there was much decorum in those days and the excitement just overwhelmed them. But, you know, the problem is, is that Jesus... Jesus was so well known that the people of the town wouldn't give them much rest and they kept coming in and interrupting and, and barging in and trying to get Jesus help with this or Jesus teaching on this and, and pretty quickly it gets to the point where he can't do anything and he is worn out but not so much as the disciples were. And so he says here, let's, uh, let's, let's go away. Um, come on guys, get in the boat and let's go up to where we normally go and, and, and take some rest. You need to, to have a little downtime to get your energy back, to, to calm down and be able to accept and work through all that has taken place. 
And so they get in the boat and they take off. But the people see him leave and they're very familiar with his habits. They know this place that he's going to and so all the people from the towns around the region rush and get there ahead of him. And so when he comes up to the shore, he can see this mass of people. And his heart goes out to them. The scripture tells us because they were like sheep without a shepherd, milling about, unsure of which direction to go, what to do next. And so he gathers them together and it says that he begins to teach them. We skip ahead. What do we skip over? We skip over the, the dinner on the grounds. 5,000 people fed with, with five loaves and two small fish. We skip ahead. We move over the, the storm on the Sea of Galilee and Jesus striding across the water to, to help them as they pull hard for the other side. We skip over these two big miracles. And we skip to the point where they come up to the land on the opposite side where Genesaret is. And as they are mooring the boat, the people recognize him. You see, even, even on the other side of the lake, which is not Jew territory, this is not where the Judeans live, that's on the other side. Here they begun to recognize him too, but for totally different reasons. And what they do is they run to their homes. They tell the good news and pretty soon everybody is bringing the sick. They bring them and lay them on mats in the, in the marketplaces. And as Jesus travels around, he's not limited to just the city of Genesaret. He moves through the towns and he moves through the villages. And it says that he even goes through the farms. And as he moves through that, people bring their sick out and they beg him, please, may we even touch the fringe on your cloak. And it tells us that all who did were healed. It's interesting. It's interesting to me that we have people here who are showing their need. They are living with a faith that says, I've got to have what Jesus has to offer. I've got to have his presence. I've got to have his, his love, his, his mercy, his grace, his, his compassion. I've got to have these things. On one side of the lake, they come and what does he meet them with? He meets them with teaching. He opens up the scriptures for them. He shows them how God is working in their lives and the lives of those around them to bring about mercy and a, a life that is full and rich and wholesome. He teaches them. And yet on the other side, it's not teaching that they ask for. No, we need physical healing. We're not looking for spiritual growth. We're looking for our bodies to be taken care of. And they lay their sick out. And Jesus walks amongst them and says, may we touch the fringe of your cloak? And he gives them permission and all who touch are healed. Acts of faith. Here we've got searching for renewal of my body. We've got renewal of my mind. We're looking at the two of these and we're saying, is one of these greater than the other? And the answer is obviously no. Jesus has come that all may know the good love of God. But God's love is not restricted to learning to walk in my way. God's love is also open to be healed. Here, let me help you. Let me fill you with hope. What an opportunity Jesus takes advantage of here. We've got people. And it's, it's, it's just like today. You see, because all of us have the same issues. We have times when, when our, our bodies are working well. They're not perfect, but they're working well. And as we live with them, we find ourselves open to growing spiritually. I want to know more about God. I want to experience that grace as it fills me. 
And so as it comes in, we, we find ourselves growing, learning more about God, finding in that a strength to go forward in His name and to live each new day as it comes because there are definitely trials that come our way, times that we don't understand. And we think sometimes that, well, uh, we really are, are moving past the need for the physical heal. We need, we're, we need this, this spiritual guidance, but it doesn't take very long. Sometimes it's a phone call from the doctor. Sometimes it's waking up and your back is spasmed so bad you don't know if you can get out of bed. Sometimes it's, it's running a fever and you're not sure why. Sometimes it's a phone call that says, we need to uh, get you back in for some more tests. We come down on Tuesday to recognize that we have just as much need still for physical healing as we ever did for spiritual healing. And you know, when you think about it, the people of your family are the same way. The people that you work with are the same way. The people that you, you might have remembered from going to school that you still maintain a friendship with, or the children that you teach, these are the ones that also have these needs. Some days it's for spiritual help. Some days it's for physical help. Some days it's a combination of the two. You can't get to the spiritual until the physical is taken care of. And the blessing is, is that when we cry out, when we show up, when we ask Jesus for teaching and healing, He doesn't differentiate. He doesn't say, okay, I'm only teaching today. Or, this is, this is Healing Tuesday. Y'all come back when it's Healing Tuesday and we'll take care of that. Instead, he says, come to me. And I remember those words, all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. We know that his healing takes place as he comes and is amongst us. And we, we need that. We need that kind of comfort. We need that kind of care. We need to know that we don't have to worry about whether He will be there tomorrow. We know He will. And He gives us, He gives us that hope. That hope that our lives are going to be able to move through this time and move into a time of knowing and living and growing closer to Him, closer to God, more able to help others. I like these stories. The contrast of them shows us that, that, that having faith isn't restricted to just a, a mind. It is a, a, a mind thinking. It is it's a, it's a body acting too. Faith says, I'm going, to, I'm going to reach out and I'm going to grab hold of whatever I can in order to be healed. It is reaching out and embracing the one who says, fear not. It is taking those moments and seeking God's presence that gives us what we need to get by. The lesson that comes to us in this is that there are people everywhere who struggle as we do. There are people who are seeking God's help, hope, and healing. Maybe they know where to look, and maybe they don't. Two things caught my eyes in this. One of them was that uh, when they saw Jesus leaving by boat, they figured out where he was going. And then they told everybody, Jesus is on move. He's heading up to the beating place up the shore. Quick, gather everybody and let's go. You imagine, they didn't have telephones. 
They didn't pull out their phones and text one another and send a global blast email. Here, let's push this onto all these notes and get everybody gathered together. It was word of mouth. One telling another, telling another, until it spread through all the towns, we are told. And not just in a short period of time. We're talking about quickly. I expect somebody ran. And here they are gathered on the shore. And Jesus comes ashore and looks at them and says, Wow! How did all these people beat us here? They're running and walking. We had a boat. I would think the boat moved a little faster than that. But then he goes across the lake. And on the other side, he moors up in, in Gennesaret. And the people there recognize him. And quickly, throughout all the towns and villages and through the farms, people gather. They're sick. It's not a moment of, of oh, I wonder why he's come. Oh no, we know what he is, we know who he is, and we know what we need. Let's gather people. And they quickly spread the word so that everywhere he went, people with their sick were waiting, trusting, hoping. You know, it didn't take any time at all. But I worry. You see, we have people who have those needs now. People who are looking for a, a closer walk with God. People who are seeking the, the healing that comes from His presence. And we've got all these advantages. We've got internet and we've got, we've got the ability to post it in the newspaper and we can put it on signs on, on the telephone post and as people drive by, they can read them. You can mail it to them. Go by and put it under the windshield wiper on their cars down at the mall. And yet, and yet we have people who still are struggling to find a place where they can get the spiritual healing they need and the physical healing that they're searching for. So I wonder, you know, if, when, when you know you need something, you do what you can to get it. When you know that the people next to you need something, do we put as much effort into going to them and saying, come, here's the one that can help you. Here's the one that gives you the same kind of strength that, that he gave to me back when I had trials. Here's the one that offers comfort, that offers presence to you. Here's the one. Come with me. You've got to meet him. What would happen if instead of, of, of just saying, yes, there's a church down the road, I'm sure they talk about Jesus there. What if instead of this, this passive accepting of the fact that there's somebody who cares. It became instead an active seeking to bring that, that healing, that help, and that hope to others. What does that need? What does that need? It needs someone taking a moment to say, why don't you come with me on Sunday? We've got a Bible study. Why don't you join with us on the Bible study? Yes, it's on an internet, but you know that means you don't have to worry about getting around people. You can, you can be safe in your home and you can participate in that way. What if it means that you have an opportunity to share God's love with someone who might be struggling? Yeah, they'll tell you, oh, I, I, I belong to so-and-so at church. Well, that's fine. How was it Sunday? Did you get a chance to go? No, no, it's, a, it's, it's tough. Well, why don't you take a moment, just come with me. I'll, I'll be happy to sit with you. I'll be happy to do the, the 
introductions and, and you don't have to worry about whether you know people or don't. Just, just come on down. A little act of faith sometimes produces a great act of, of wonder and mercy and compassion and healing and help. Maybe, maybe this message is asking us to do as well. May God lead you. May God help you. May God heal you. May He strengthen you to invite others to know Him too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we pray. Oh, loving God, we ask that you continue to work in our hearts. Give us such a desire for you and such a recognition that you are the one who has the healing we search for. May we bring others to know you as well. For we ask it in your precious and holy name. Amen. There is always an invitation to Christian discipleship. And as there may be requests on your part for that, we invite you to come and to ask. But as we, as we come to our last song of worship, I invite you to stand as you are able. It comes out of uh, the little black supplement. You will find the words up on the screen, though. And it is, come and find the quiet center. May we stand and sing. Thank you.